there were numerous uh, issues raised about the dealing with minority, religious minorities. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, a prominent member of my delegation, Mr. Betkolia. He is a member of the parliament and also general, secretary general of a Syrian Universal Alliance. In fact, he is a member of the same parliament in which my brother is a speaker. And the, the vote of my brother is equally exactly the same vote as uh, Mr. Bitkolia, as a Christian member of the parliament. Mr. Bitkolia, please uh, present your view. I bet you. In the name of God, I, as the representative of the Assyrian community in the Iranian parliament and the secretary general of the Assyrian Universal Alliance would like to begin by paying homage to Jesus Christ and his real followers and state the following. Under the constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran, race, ethnicity and religion do not distinguish among people bestowing superiority to one group over another. For this reason, there is no discriminatory approach in laws, legislations, or policy-making processes of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The recognized religious minorities in Iran are Christian, Jews, and Zoroastrians who have resided in the country for a very long time and coexisted peacefully with their other uh, uh, compatriots. The followers of these religions are fully free to practice their faith, conduct their education, and own their own numerous sacred places and cemeteries. According to Article 13 of the Constitution, religious minorities can freely conduct their religious rites and ceremonies and act according to their own canons in matters relating to their civil affairs and despite their small population of under 200,000 under Article 64 of the Constitution, Zoroastrians and Jews each elect one representative, Assyrian and Chaldean Christians jointly elect one representative, and Armenian Christians in the north and those in the south of the country each elect one representative to the parliament, whereas for the rest of the population, only each block of 150,000 are enlightened, uh, entitled to elect one representative. In accordance to the single article law of Civil Affairs Act, tribunals are to rule according to the solid religious rules and regulations governing will and inheritance in cases relating to the followers of the recognized religions in Iran. With a view to promoting the presence of religious minorities and increasing their participation in various socio-political arenas and decision-making processes, numerous actions have been made in the framework of constitutional and regular laws. Among them, the most important ones are as follows. In the political field, representative of the religious minorities other than in the parliament are present in town and village councils as well and can freely engage in organizing themselves within their own community, benefiting from annual budgets and financial assistance allocated by the government. In the field of social and cultural activities, they publish numerous old age printed media own religious places, use public and private sports facilities, attend national and exclusive sports teams, and organize international cultural festivities. The followers of these religious minorities own their own exclusive schools and facilities for teaching their religious lessons and their languages. They also can pursue their studies at all levels, including higher education and seek faculty and government jobs. In terms of economic affairs, they are active in all sectors and in an organized way within trade and production associations and guilds. Similar to other citizens, they could be employed in university, faculties, medical and health professions, law firms, and other public activities. As regards ju the judicial field, care is taken in this field to provide for the observance of the rights of the minorities, including by providing for identical blood money with Muslims in the case of unintentional manslaughter under the clause 
of Article 297 of the Parliament Act ratified in 2003. Uh, statistics and cultural centers, publications, and sacred places are as follows. 284 churches belonging to the Christians in Iran, including churches of Eastern Assyrians, Protestant Assyrians, Catholic Assyrians, Chaldeans, Catholic Latins, uh, Armenian Catholics, Adventists, Adventists Persian-speaking Evangelicals, Anglicans, Assemblies of God, Gregorian Armenians, and Evangelical Armenians. Along the line of, in, li in line with attention paid to maintaining and preserving cultural heritage, 40 churches have been repaired and reconstructed in the past several years. 27 churches are registered on the list of Iran's national heritage, and 21 churches are to be registered on the same list. The famous ancient sacred Tatavos Church is nominated for registration on the World Heritage List. There are 52 associations, centers, and artistic, cultural, social, educational organizations belonging to Christians, as well as numerous publications managed by them. Zoroastrians own 38 educational units, 62 temples, 40 cultural units, 9 medical units, 36 associations and centers, 14 sport units, 7 libraries, and several publications in different cities. The Jewish community owns 76 synagogues, 32 associations, publication and publication houses. All religious minorities are also active in the civil society and assume offices in relevant fields, including those relating to women. Thank you. President, uh, I would like right now to ask uh, Professor Mubashiri to take the floor. This lady is the chancellor of a huge university in Tehran called Az Zahra University and she will explain about the present status of women in Iran. Professor Mubashiri, please. In the name of God, the significant advancement of Iranian women's status in the society during the period of 30 years after the victory of the Islamic Revolution under the auspices of the strategic national policies and programs is undeniable. Benefiting from the religious teachings and observing the principles of moderation and strengthening the institution of family, the Islamic Republic of Iran has provided a favorable situation without any legal impediments for women's promotion. Women, women's rights activists both in governmental and non-governmental levels have so far been able to do a a good job, a great job. They, while utilizing the potentials of the government, the parliament, the judiciary, city councils, municipal councils, and uh, others, have managed to gain outstanding achievements in women's uh, domain. There has been a 14.53% increase in women's employment. The literacy rate has reached 80.34% as compared to three decades ago. The number of women that have been enrolled in the higher education institutions increased to 68%, a 27-fold uh, increase as compared to 30 years ago. Today, 30% of uh, instructors in universities and seminaries belong to women in the health sector. The women's life expectancy has gone up to 74.51% in 2007 as compared with 56.33% in 1977. Women GPs have increased 301% and 98% of women specialists are females. In the political arena, the number of women in different decision-making and managerial posts on different profiles has increased to an outstanding level. There are 528 women judges, 
their presence in the city and uh, village councils has increased to 79.76 percent. Another not notable figure is the number of NGOs active in women's rights that reached uh, 1,500 NGOs. The number of books published by women in has reached 74, has increased by 77, by 74.21 percent. Women's active participation in publications, art, sport, film production, athletic, scientific Olympiads are among other important women activities. In parallel to aforementioned achievements in the women's domain during the past three decades, the Women, Human Rights and Responsibilities Charter, based on three pillars of spirituality, justice and security, and within the framework of religion and national principles, have been codified. Some outstanding achievements have also been gained in, in, in the legislative area especially which include women's rights and fam and family issues such as the right to custody of children filing for divorce equality in obtaining blood money from the insurance companies and getting movable inheritance due to the importance that the Islamic Republic of Iran attaches to human dignity in order to prevent human trafficking the legislation for combat combating this crime was adopted in 2004 in order to prevent false marriages, slavery, or imprisonment. The Islamic Republic of Iran acceded to the Convention of the Rights of Child in 1994 and in accordance with Article 44 of the Convention, submitted its preliminary report to the Committee on the Rights of the Child on December 9, 1997. Currently, the Ministry of Justice is the national focal point for the Convention. Among the major steps taken by Iran regarding With regard to the prevention of forced marriages in certain remote rural areas where there exists resistance to legal developments due to transient ethnic traditions, in addition to cultural programs, Article 3 of the marriage law has set the heavy sentence of imprisonment. According to the Iranian Civil Code, forced marriages are null and may be nullified by courts. In the judicial system of the Islamic Republic of Iran, children have no criminal responsibility. Given the importance accorded by the legislator, legislator to the raising of children, this responsibility is given by the court to the guardians or, if required, to the correctional institutions so that children may follow a normal life after returning to the society. Also, all crimes committed by adults under the age of 18 are prosecuted in the juvenile court where a great deal of lenience is shown to them with a view to Islamic and human con humane consideration. Even in cases of intentional murder, murders committed by those under the age of 18, they are tried in the criminal court of the province with a five-member panel of judges. Given that the law and the Islamic Sharia determine the sentence of retaliation for intentional murder, the government's responsibility is merely limited to the establishment of the intentionality of the murder and the implementation of the sentence is contingent upon the request of the next of kin. In light of the existing cultural and religious milieu of the country, disregard for such requests may result in chaos and vigilantism. Based on the current practice, even in cases where the next of kin ask for retaliation, great efforts are expended by reconciliation commissions to convince the next of kin to concede to receiving blood money instead of execution. 
In the past few decades, tens of convicts have been spared execution as a result of these efforts. The principal policy of the Islamic Republic of Iran in this regard is to encourage reconciliation, even by providing financial assistance for dear payments. Mr. President.